The whole world knows the names of Coke, Grace, and Mandel. These women stained themselves with incredible cruelty and inhumanity by crimes against prisoners of concentration camps. However, there were other women, no less and sometimes even more terrible and ruthless. Unfortunately, most of them were either not brought to trial at all, or received meager prison terms, or even were fully acquitted. Civilian SS Hild Lobauer Almost nothing is known about Hild's early life. Some believe that she grew up without a father. Others are sure that Lobauer was the mother of two children. Anyway, the beginning of Hild's career in the concentration camp was rather atypical. For refusing to work at an ammunition factory, she was sent to the Ravensburg concentration camp, then to Auschwitz, and from there to Auschwitz Bickernau, where she received the position of capo overseer of prisoners. In this status, Hild Lobauer showed herself so well that she quickly gained the full confidence of the administration of the concentration camp. And among the prisoners, she received the nickname SS Woman Without Uniform. Hild Lobauer's favorite pastime was to supervise the order in the barracks and how the prisoners worked. At the same time, any offense was punished by the most merciless beating. Also, the woman loved to let dogs loose and Lobauer never stopped them from tearing apart prisoners. For special merits in 1944, Hill Lobauer was transferred to the Ravensburg concentration camp, and in 1945 she was transferred to the infamous Bergen-Belsen. There is no complete information about the woman's crimes. However, her other nickname among the prisoners was Carrie Boss, which speaks for itself. After her arrest, Hild Lobauer was accused in the Bergen-Belsen trial where she refused to admit her guilt. She was sentenced to 10 years in prison, but for unknown reasons, she was released already in 1950. Her further fate is unknown. Nourisher Irene Hashke Until 1944, the 23-year-old girl led a quiet and inconspicuous life until she was recruited for internship and training at the Gross Rosen concentration camp. Already within five weeks, the girl learned to look at the prisoners as if they were walking corpses. After training, according to some reports, Irene Hashke was sent as a warden to the Marish Wastewasser prison, and in February 1945, she reappeared in the concentration camp, this time in Bergen-Belsen, where Hashke studied the basics of mastery under the supervision of one of the most terrible female executioners, Herta Both. Hashke worked in the food block, giving out food to the prisoners. But besides the ladle, she always had a rubber baton and a wooden club nearby. For a silence, a sidelong glance, insufficient respect, or careless movement, Hashki mercilessly beat the prisoners with either a club or a stick. Moreover, the girl especially loved to mock children who were weakened from hunger, and whom she beat with pronounced pleasure. After Germany's liberation, Irene Hashki was convicted in the Bergen-Belsen trial, receiving a 10-year sentence. And like Lobauer, for a known reason she was released in 1951. The Nurses Furies One of the most famous among the little-known nurses was Pauline Kneisler. She worked at the so-called Euthanasia Hospital at the Grafenek Castle. The young girl was engaged as a rule in the introduction of lethal injections with which she killed the disabled and people with mental illness. Some who escaped the injections were sent by Kneisler to the guest chambers. Moreover, the nurse assured the doomed and firmly convicted herself that the guest chamber should not be afraid, because it did not hurt at all. According to some reports, Pauline Kneisler killed at least 70 patients daily. What is really wild, that the girl sent even Wehrmacht soldiers to another world. She told her good friend about this. Pauline Kneisler administrated lethal injections to soldiers who were hospitalized with depression or mental illness received at the front. Unfortunately, Pauline Kneisler's colleagues remained unknown. These midwives assured the pregnant female prisoners that their fetus was not developing properly and an abortion was urgently needed. Moreover, an abortion was carried out as a result of savage experiments, of which the unfortunate, as a rule, died in terrible agony. The Killer Secretary Stereotypes that civilians were bullied only by guards, unfortunately, are quite common. However, no less monstrous crimes were committed by German women from the so-called auxiliary services. 
Moreover, according to their official duties, there was no need to contact either with prisoners or even with civilians. However, the facts suggest otherwise. So, 22-year-old Johanna Altvater Zell held a rather inconspicuous position as Secretary of Police Commissioner Wilhelm Westerheide. The main object of the police commissioner's work was the Jewish ghetto. And then his secretary, a sweet and pleasant girl, among the prisoners of the ghetto earned the nickname Fräulein Hannah. Her amusement was to lure Jewish children with the candy. And when the kid took a treat, put a gun in his mouth and shoot. During the liquidation of the ghetto, Fräulein Hannah personally threw sick children out of the hospital onto the stone pavement. Moreover, the height was at the level of the third floor, so most of the unfortunate people crushed to death. When Jews from the ghetto were driven into cars, they were personally urged on by the secretary of the police commissioner. According to the recollections of survivors, she behaved like a real shepherd. Finally, the most terrible thing that this girl did was the reprisal against a boy who had the impudence to come up with some kind of request. Fräulein Hannah grabbed the child by the legs and started banging his head against the wall. Then she threw him right under the feet of his father, in whose eyes this massacre took place. The wildest thing is that, having returned to her homeland, she got a job in a social service and even adopted a boy. The Huntress Secretary The same secretary as Johanna Altvater Zell was Lisa Lottmeyer. She, among other things, was not only a secretary, but also the mistress of Commissioner Hermann Gunweg. The girl was entrusted with the responsibility of monitoring the productivity of Jews in the Lida ghetto. But in her free time, she and her friends loved to hunt. The selected prisoners were driven out into the field, where Lisalot shot at them, clapping her hands happily after each successful shot. In addition, Lisalot Mayer personally developed a plan for the extermination of the Jews and personally prepared an order to this effect. As a result, on May 8, 1942, more than 8,000 prisoners of the Jewish ghetto in Lida were shot. The Prisoner Hunteress Liesel, the wife of the commandant of the concentration camp, SS officer Gustav Wilhaus, had nothing to do with the SS troops or even with the support staff. However, she was a real curse for the prisoners of the Yinovska concentration camp. And it all started only after dinner, when the wives and husbands of the officers came to visit the family couple. Liesel would pick up a special rifle for the hunting rabbits and randomly shoot at the prisoners. The whole horror of the situation is that every successful shot was greeted with joyful cries by Liesel's daughter, who was always present nearby. Husband's assistant as a flogger Also having no official status in the SS troops, the wife of an SS officer from one of the concentration camps, Josephine Block, decided to volunteer to help her husband. She loved to brutally whip those who were selected for execution in the gas chamber. The second entertainment of Josephine was the torture of the condemned. Thirdly, the most, if we may say so, harmless hobby of the officer's wife was the use of a cart, with which, having accelerated, she simply rammed and knocked down the walking prisoners. On her orders, four girls were executed who, according to Block, were too weak and could not work. The most famous crime of this fury was the brutal murder of a girl who asked a woman to save her life. Josephine promised to help the girl and then knocked down and kicked her to death. Wives Executioners Vera Wulov, the wife of the police battalion commander, already being pregnant found herself a hobby. When in Poland, 11,000 Jewish prisoners were escorted to a concentration camp in Treblinka, a woman beat the weekend and strangled to death with a whip. When her hand got tired, Vera simply shot the unfortunate. And, similar to Vera, perhaps the only one who received a term for her crimes, not an official employee of the SS, 23-year-old Erna Petri, the wife of an SS officer, once met six emaciated children on the street. The children, the eldest of whom was 12 years old, had apparently fled the concentration camp. But Erna, not embarrassed, took them into the house, warmed them, fed them, and then, promising to help, took them into the forest. So the unfortunate children on the edge of the pit were shot in cold blood in the back of the head. The crime could not be concealed, and after the war, Erna received a 30-year sentence.